Right. Uh, so I'm delighted that my copy of this book has arrived in the post, Creative Writing for Social Research. It's just come out in January 2021. Your copy hasn't arrived, Helen. No, I'm so sad. <laughs> It'll be there soon. Yeah. And it'd be nice to see some copies appearing on, on Twitter. But let's, let's talk about the book. Um, what do you like most about it? Oh, I just love everything about it. This is, this is probably my favourite book of all the books I've ever been involved in writing. I like the diversity, the variety, the fact that this subject that is so close to my heart is now in a book, a good book that I'm really proud of being involved with, that will help and inform other people as they progress through their own writing activity in the context of social research. Yes, and I, I uh, one of the things I like most about teaching is is uh, working with students to build up confidence, graduate students and undergraduate students, to build up confidence to try things that they didn't know before they could do and to see where that takes them. And I really like teaching in a way that, that students will run with and, and, uh, and do things that I hadn't expected. And I'm hoping that this book will be more of, a fire, more of a starting gun than a finished work in a sense. I think it might be something that will lead people to, to do things they didn't know they could do and I didn't know they could do and I couldn't imagine. Um, we talk about some things in the book that, that, that other people do. We've, we've, um, we've talked about some things we already knew about, but in the process of writing the book, we've come across a lot of different ways of writing, some of which have really surprised me. Um, I've, I've been enjoying seeing, for instance, the use of graphic novels and animation. Um, not just in academic writing, but sometimes in, in, in fully in, in writing academic books, but also PhD theses. Stand up is something I hadn't expected. Yes, that was a lovely surprise. Um, the great Kate Fox, who came yes. to the workshop where all this began and did an amazing poetry stand up performance um, that had us all with our jaws on the floor and then in stitches of laughter the next minute. And I think that comes through in the book as well. There are some very humorous moments and I like that because a lot of books on these kinds of subjects are just so serious. And here we're inviting people to have fun as well as work at the same time. It's lovely when it, that combination comes true. Yes, and, and Kate's, Kate's comedy is funny. It really is funny, but it's also full of ideas. And that's the thing. I think it takes us somewhere we couldn't have gone otherwise. And that's also true of the poetry in the book, uh, there's, there's a number of poems. Who, who's, the, who's written the poems, uh, Helen? My mind has gone blank, isn't that terrible? You've got a copy there. I can picture her face. I can Katie, we have a number of Katies in the book. That's right. Yes, we also have lyrics for, for a song, which when the song was performed, we had a workshop where we, we opened up and explored some of these themes. And I was chairing that session. And normally chairing sessions, I'm just looking at my watch and making sure people don't go over. But, but when, um, Katrina uh, Douglas talked through how she'd come to write the lyrics to a song through through some interviews and conversations with older people and then sang the song I I uh, I wasn't the only one uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house so it's, there wasn't. it's it's emotionally moving as well sometimes but one thing that we say in the book and one thing that we feel in the book is what we didn't want to do is to write anything too tidy we wanted to to produce a book that wasn't wasn't an inaccessible finished overly polished work we even say we we, we even say there's space in here for scruffiness we call it strategic scruffiness we hope it's always strategic rather than sloppiness but also for bad writing and what do we mean by bad writing what do you mean by it I think it's writing that's unpolished it might be fragmentary it might be um something that could be regarded perhaps as poorly expressed, perhaps ungrammatical, but it's getting you somewhere. It's the start of something, it's a, it's, or it's on the way to somewhere you want to be. And I think certainly in the book, some of our own paragraphs looking back are perhaps less than ideal, and authors don't often like to say these kinds of things, um, but it's, a book is never finished. Okay, it's published, but we could still go back and improve it if we had another year to work on it further. And maybe we will in future editions. That's what happens. You know, after some years, sometimes there's a good reason. There may or may not be with this book. I don't have a strong feeling about it. But I like the fact also that the contributions are in very different voices. We didn't try to make them identical or to fit some kind of format or theme. 
there are poems, there are play scripts, there is prose, there's all sorts in there. So this um, is this is bad. I really this is like bad. The variety. Yeah. Mm. So so it's it's a kind of scruffiness which allows for different voices. We use the word poly uh, polyvocal and um, polygraphical as well because there's mm. a visual dimension to it. But I also think of bad as imagine a child who's good all the time. Something isn't going to happen. Something is going to be constrained. Uh, there'll be some unfinished business. A child who's allowed to be bad sometimes um, will be able to test boundaries, to push things. Um, I like it when uh, Judith Butler talks about gender trouble, um, causing trouble, being trouble, being difficult to other people. And I think that that's something that we try to learn from. So she, she uses the word queer for that. We use that in our conclusion, queering and searching writing. But I think I think we're pursuing the good, the, the, the bad that's productive and the bad that that can uh, take us somewhere. One thing that we say in the book is we want to give people license and it's almost, um, we don't, we're not gatekeepers, we're not, um, we're, we're not authority figures, but by showing what's been done before and how other people have broken rules, strategically and playfully and not always successfully, but often successfully, uh, how something, something, some insights can come out of that. And so we are wanting to, to give permission in the sense of showing people what other people have done and why, why it can be useful to do. So why, why it can be useful to cause a little bit of trouble with the pen. Absolutely agree. And of course, having it in a book that's published by an academic press where it's been peer reviewed and so on and so forth, um, gives it kudos with potential doctoral supervisors, for example, who are always reassured by precedent. And so in that way, we're, we, maybe we're a bit naughty, Richard. Maybe you and I are a little bit naughty, <laughs> a little bit subversive from time to time and we encourage that sort of subversion and creative useful naughtiness in other people too. Yes maybe that's is that a good point for us to stop now? I think so it's been lovely yeah. to talk to you. I hope you enjoy the book and uh, and, and here it is again. Oop.